Okay, so uh, here we have Arnie, the 127 ambulance. And uh, Arnie has come in to us for a carburetor and ignition upgrade. Um, it's going to be a little bit of a different video format on this project because Steve, who normally does work in the workshop, is actually in Australia at the moment. Sorry, Australia. Is that a bad impression? You're just shaking your head. I am okay. just shaking my head. Um, he's in Australia at the moment. Um, so Holly's going to uh, be carrying out this work. Obviously, he's more than capable because he built our engines. Um, but he doesn't like appearing on the camera. So uh, we'll just jump in with the camera every now and again and show the different stages as it goes along. We're going to tackle this as two different uh, jobs. We're going to do the carburetor section first, and then we'll do the ignition upgrade afterwards. Um, so first thing Holly's going to do is remove the SU carburetors with the intake manifold and this big air filter box set up as well. They're all going to be boxed up because the customer's going to keep them, um, I think possibly for sort of history of the vehicle, etc. Um, that will also allow us to remove the rocker covers uh, and obviously you see the camshaft uh, to check internal engine condition, although I have already had a look down the oil filler cap. It does look really nice under there. This hasn't got many miles on the clock, I forget how many. Um, I think it's close to around 50,000. Uh, so uh, yeah, expecting things to be nice inside, however low mileage doesn't always dictate that uh, because it could have very infrequent oil changes over its lifespan which can cause black sludge to build up. Uh, so. Uh, Let's uh, cut back in a couple of seconds and see what Holly's got up to and what we can see inside the engine. We just had a look on the uh, odometer and uh, we're kind of assuming actually it is the correct mileage, 51,000 miles on there. As you look inside, uh, this engine was built in 88 according to the date stamp on the rockers um, and uh, an 88 engine, so 31 years old, um, looking this good inside is uh, remarkable. It, it does show its low mileage and probably has been serviced you know, at regular intervals as opposed to other low mileage engines that don't get that. Um, so the camshaft is just showing signs of discoloration on here. We just had all of these lifters out. They're all actually um, perfectly flat on the bottom still. So um, it's actually in good shape. Um, probably uh, be okay for a few more thousand miles before the camshaft wear starts to set in. However, the sooner you catch that, obviously the better. Um, and assuming this car is going to see a few more um, hours on it now, uh, getting a camshaft in there would be a good idea. Uh, probably the next 10,000 miles or so I say I guess but um, we discussed this with the customer the customer doesn't have the budget for that at the moment and we're perfectly happy to put this back together with this carburetor on because there's nothing in here that's uh, um, of detrimental value to putting it back together in reliability or anything so um, Holly's already drilled out the hole on the rear of the timing cover for the water pump I don't know if Steve's gonna be able to see it but it's it's down here um, so with the Weber conversion, we now use both of these. One of them uh, was blanked off, so both of these are now used, which we'll uh, show you once that carburetor sat on top of here. Um, so uh, airbox is off, which obviously opens up a lot more space. This car's got lots of uh, extra wiring in for its various jobs it's done over the years, which the customer is going to remove gradually when he gets the car back. Um, our task here is carburetor and ignition, um, although it's easy to get tempted to get involved with other things but um, so uh, Holly's storming along uh, and uh, next bit I reckon will be uh, carburetor beginning to go back on. So Holly's got the intake manifold, thermostat housing and carburetor bolted on, uh, throttle cables on the bracket as well because the uh, fourth bolt of the carburetor is a, uh, that bolts it down to the inlet manifold is a stud that comes with the throttle uh, cable. So you can see here the S-pipe bend uh, that goes from the thermostat bypass onto that second um, inlet to the water pump on the back of the timing cover. Um, so that's why that gets drilled out for the correct thermostatic bypass so that you don't get any weird temperature spikes or anything when the engine's warming up if the heater matrix is um, blocked off due to it being warm. Um, so uh, we've left this port blank, uh, sorry, open ready for the vacuum advance on the distributor which we'll obviously be checking out as along with the me uh, mechanical. Um, Steve behind the camera has already jetted this accordingly haven't you? I have. Hopefully you jetted it for a 3.5. I think so. 
<laughs> um, and also done all the float bar heights, so correct, and yep. droop and everything. So that's preset. All we've got to do on that is the base mixtures on these two mixture screws when we get the car up and running. Uh, we also install a fuel banjo on this carburetor when we supply it as a kit so that uh, we can properly angle the pipe, fuel pipe to it uh, under the air cleaner because the standard one that just comes straight out actually fouls the air cleaner. So uh, we'll um, let Holly get back in this area because he runs a mile every time we get the camera out and he'll now start connecting up all of the uh, extras. Obviously the rocket covers have got to go back on with fresh gaskets, throttle cable, choke cable, fuel line, um, breather pipes uh, which we'll show as well which go into the base of the air cleaner. Um, that'll probably be the carburation side of things done. I reckon so. Yeah. Holly's finished off installing the carburetor kit then. Um, we'll just cover a couple of little bits. So both breather um, breathers from the rocker covers, which you'll notice he's uh, painted and sanded the ribbing back, so looking lovely. Uh, both breather pipes go back to a T-piece and go into the base of the air cleaner with the um, little port that's supplied with the air cleaner. Uh, the PCV valve, or the, the one-way vacuum uh, check valve for the brake servo is taken from the original manifold and fitted in and the original temperature sensor is also fitted in. Uh, that's quite important so the gauges still read correctly. Um, so uh, with that done, choke cable, throttle cable's in, fuel pipe is in and there's an inline fuel filter in it. We can uh, turn the key. Um, we've not set anything up yet, we've just got both mixture screws, one and a half turns out. Uh, there's no point in doing any settings yet until we've got the ignition system fitted, uh, because spark quality and ignition timing will affect the em emissions uh, vastly. So, uh, the next thing now is getting uh, Holly to fit all that kit and uh, wire it up. Right, well, Holly has fitted the ignition kit. Um, he's also done a full tune-up, so ignition timing is set. Emissions are set on the carburetor as well. Um, so just a brief overview of the ignition kit. Uh, the vacuum advance checked out okay, so we suck on the pipe, make sure the diaphragm pulls the base plate in here. And the mechanical advance was good inside the distributor as well. The rotor arm snapped back sharply and there was minimal free play in there. There's always a little bit of free play, but it's minimal. Uh, RPI amplifier. It's mounted on the wing there, uh, with its cable plugged into the side of the distributor, and then the wires are running up here to coil positive and coil negative, and an earth on the clamping plate for the coil. Um, magma core plug leads are obviously installed, and uh, we've done a compression test while the plugs were out. Uh, everything is perfect on compressions, and we've fitted non-resistive spark plugs. So that leaves road test. It's yep. about to rain, so we can abandon you on the side of the road. Nope. Did you bring a jacket? Nope. You're going to get wet then, aren't you? Nope. Right then, time for a road test in Arnie. So, uh, here we go. Engine's still cold at the moment, we're still on choke, but uh, no problems there. We'll uh, continue as planned. That's fourth here. Yeah. I know, I want it fourth. It's a very underrated gear, it's fourth. All will become clear later. I'm sure it will. Fourth is lovely. It's the perfect ratio. The wheels and the engine are working in motion together, in harmony almost, I'd say. It's also very quiet. So, um, Edelbrock carburetor is obviously installed on here. I'm still sticking with fourth, Steve. Um, see that. Edelbrock carburetor um, with our full conversion kit, so everything you need to fit it. Um, our full ignition upgrade, that's what's been done to Arnie, as you've just seen in the video previous to us, because I've just realised that this is the ending to this video that we're recording. It is. Um, so, uh, here we are out for a road test. Um, as you can see, the car drives lovely in fourth gear. And Throttle responds very well. We're actually on choke a little bit at the moment because we've only just started up and left the forecourt. And uh, yeah, don't really know what else to say because it just does everything we know it's going to do. Uh, don't need to say anything else. 
No. We'll um, head down here and drop you off and get some shots from outside of it. Yeah. I can't do this. I'll let you experience some other gaze. You wouldn't. There's no need. Right. Um, this is new. Oh, you get. Go on. Uh, go on. Uh, yeah. Go on. Violence in the workplace. Go I won't on. stand for it. Yeah, 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 yeah whatever. Yeah. I'm out. Bye. I think we'll uh, we we'll choose a different road. I've had a few comments recently of people realising we're always on the same road, so we'll go a different way. I see what you mean about fourth. Yeah, that's second. This is third. We'll have fourth, I think. Um, so the customer does know this gearbox needs some uh, serious attention. Um, fourth gear is the only gear that's sort of nice and quiet and where you'll be able to hear me. Um, so, uh, all joking aside, the gearbox actually selects gears absolutely fine and everything. Um, I think it's got a bearing gone on the on the shaft, so because it's noisy and every gear other than fourth, so um, the customer's happy to take that work on himself. Uh, but when it came to tuning a carburetor and setting an ignition system up, um, he wanted us to to do that, whereas he can change a gearbox no problem. to the workshop rather than walking. Oh, thanks. You are kind. I try. <laughs> 